Over the past three years, the Everett Company has been exploring the relationship between art and science. What was intriguing about working on the science project was the fact that we discovered that scientists and artists really work alike. We, um, upon reading uh, the autobiography of the Wright brothers, we really discovered that they work like artists do. They experiment, they create things, they have a lot of failures and few successes, but they keep pushing forward. The Everett Dance Theater's founder and artistic director, Dorothy Jungles, also is a teacher and dance therapist. She saw the educational potential of linking art and science. I began to ask who in the curriculum uh, likes to get work with ideas and who in the curriculum uh, works with invention and problem solving. And that's where I felt like we should go, you know. And, um, and so that's, that was science. In 1989, the Everett Dance Theater met with six science teachers. Among them was Paul Mello, a physics teacher at Middletown High School near Newport, Rhode Island. The teachers ended up dancing, and, and uh, the dancers ended up uh, taking a few physics classes and, and learning about uh, how we teach physics. Then Paul Mello brought the Everett dancers to his school. We uh, just made an announcement and said that uh, uh, we're interested in doing a project that involves uh, dance and science and art and history and anybody who's interested in uh, you know, learning about dance and how it relates to other things, come on down. We were hoping to get, what, maybe a dozen folks that would be willing to come on after school and and see what we were about, and 42 <laughs> people showed up and, and uh, we were off. The Everett dancers, Paul Mello and his students, spent three years developing a performance piece they called the Science Project. You'd start seeing different elements of a dance coming together. Um, but from a science point of view, what I was seeing was problem solving. What I was seeing from an educator's point of view is a physics student having a conversation with uh, a theater student about center of gravity. <laughs> so I was seeing the kinds of connections there that, that make me very excited as an educator. dancers studied the work of scientists Marie Curie, Robert Oppenheimer, Isaac Newton, Albert Einstein, and of artists René Magritte, John Coltrane, Beethoven. Composer John Belcher and chemist John Burke wrote a musical score that included this original piece based on the creation of water from hydrogen and oxygen. Well, I do not believe we can be number one in science and math unless we pay attention to the entire student and in particular if we do not look at our arts education programs. Ellen Harris is the Associate Provost for the Arts at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Since its inception in 1861, Harris says, MIT has always fostered a relationship between science and the arts. According to Harris, of all subjects, the arts and sciences are the closest and most interrelated. Design is a critical part of the engineering process. Engineers always begin by making a drawing. Drawing is an enormously important part of mechanical engineering, of electrical engineering. Uh, it's an enormously important part of architecture. In order to do science and math at the highest levels, one needs to have an enormous amount of discipline. One needs to be able to immerse oneself in a single idea for a long period of time. One needs to have enormous stores of imagination. And one good way of instilling those things in young students is through the arts. Everett okay. Dance Theater and physics teacher Paul Mello are now developing a curriculum based on the science project so it can be used by other teachers. The Providence, Rhode Island based troupe will continue to perform the science project throughout the country. Their plans for the coming year include stops in Austin, Texas, Columbus, Ohio, and Toronto, Canada. For Connecticut Public Radio, I'm Phyllis Jaffe.